Hi, everybody. Have you ever heard uh, the devil is a liar? You ever said that? The devil is a liar? Maybe, maybe we should say it together. The devil is a liar. If, if we say that, uh, we have to not only say that there's a lie out there, but there's also truth out there. So if the devil is a liar, there must be truth somewhere, right? And so if we can start to think about uh, what, what is going on in our life right now, is it built on a lie or is it built on truth? You, it would help you to understand uh, a little bit about where your heart is. Because our heart is the center of who we are. Like if we were to point to ourselves, this old, old thing, right? Point to yourself. You always point to your heart. You don't point to your head. You don't point to your hand. You don't point to your foot. Uh, but if, if my heart is built on, uh, on truth, not around truth, but on truth, I, I can be in right standing with Christ if I give my life to him, if I give my heart to the truth, if I give my heart to Christ, my, my, my life is going to be built on something that will stand no matter what comes our way, right? Doesn't matter what happens in our life. Uh, so being forgiven is more than just going to church. <laughs> See, because sometimes we think, well, if I just went to the right church, if I just had the right pastor, if I just got uh, you know, that raise, or if I just got that new job or whatever, uh, but going to church doesn't make you saved or doesn't make you a Christian, what's in your heart does. And uh, no more than standing in your garage makes you a car, okay? Because I could go stand in a garage and say, I'm a Ferrari, but I wouldn't be a Ferrari because I'm still... Uh, a, a man, okay? And so, uh, so what you believe really does matter. I, I wonder if we could say that together. What we believe really does matter. And, and so, so, you know, uh, newborn babies have the fastest heartbeats. And uh, your heart is in the middle of your chest. These are just facts, okay? Uh, your heart beats about 100,000 times a day. 100,000 beats a day. Woo! Your, your heart pumps over 2,000 gallons a day, all right, of blood every day. 2,000 gallons. 100,000 beats, 2,000 gallons. Your, uh, in your heart lies the secret to your motive in any given situation. And uh, no, no, the one, no one really knows why your heart is associated with love, <laughs> except for... That's what drives me. That's my motive, see? And so, uh, I, I wonder what Eve was thinking about when she picked the fruit from the tree and took a bite and handed it to her husband, Adam, who also took a bite. I, I wonder what they were thinking. I wonder if they were uh, uh, more than just deceived, right? More than, uh, more than just deceived a little bit. They, they, they allowed a lie to come in and to take their heart and to lead their life in a whole different direction. That, that, that's that's quite, a, quite a crazy thing. Because, see, Adam didn't just have the Logos word, right? The, he had the word of God, but, but he had the rhema word. He had God speaking to him every day, like in the cool of E. So he had both options uh, available to him, but he, he continued to go in the direction of a lie. Just like us, we, we have the ability to open our Bibles and read them and get the Logos word every day. We can go to church, we can study the, the word. Uh, we can actually hear from God. God is still alive today, he's not dead. He didn't stop talking to people. Uh, he still talks to us today. So he's still speaking to us today. But, but Satan comes to twist the truth just a little. Did God really say that? Did he really say, did, is this what he meant? See, because inside of the heart of every man is this, uh, we want to replace God, we want to be God, we want to do what God does, because we are creative. We are, we are created to be, a, to be creative. So we are always um, uh, creating something new from something that was old, maybe. Or, or, or we have this idea that life will be better someday. We're, we're the only species on the planet that knows we're going to die. Ooh, that's a big truth right there. So, 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 what, I, I think, I think, 
We are not yet, when we are born, we are not ready for life. Not really ready for life. We are not really ready uh, to go conquer the world. We think we can. And often in our life, we, we, we get this uh, idea, this, this pride that says that we can do stuff that we're not yet ready to do. But we have to come to a place where we understand we still need God, we still need to learn, and we still need to know the truth. Okay? And so, 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 so we're seeking affirmation from people or circumstances or situations to try to fill an empty place in our heart. And God sent Jesus the truth. He sent Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He's the, the way through life, okay? Not just uh, for life, but through life, because he is life. He puts life in me. Therefore, I, when I, uh, we're going to live forever. And when we live forever, we're going to live in truth forever. We're going to live in the presence of Jesus forever. It, matter of fact, in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, I think it says, it says uh, God put the, the world in our heart. He put, he put something in our heart that... So, so that we, we, we look for an uh, answer, right? We're looking for answers, uh, but he's trying to give us a supernatural answer, a spiritual answer uh, that, that is ap applicable to the worldly circumstances that we're in. He put it in our heart. He put something in our heart, an emptiness in our heart. We need a filling in our heart. So, so Jesus doesn't try to manipulate you, though. Come on now. Jesus didn't come to manipulate you. He didn't come to uh, teach you how to manipulate others. He came to present to you the option, right? This is a decision that we make to accept Christ, to accept truth into our life, and, and then we can, we can be whole, right? Come on, like the kids. Like the kids. Uh, uh, for such is the kingdom of heaven, right? They're like kids, like a kid again. Like I'm looking to my father who happens to be the king. I'm looking to him for all that, that pertains to my life, all that pertains to my circumstance, all that pertains to my situation. Give me the logos, God. Give me the rhema word today, God, and, and, and I'll do it. So, so Galatians, it says, verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Okay? So, so there's uh, stuff we do, and then there's a crop that comes later, right? So, so if I'm sowing in truth, okay, I will receive a, a better harvest. If I sow in lies, I will receive a not so good harvest. But there are consequences to everything that we do. Come on now. There are, maybe we could say it together. There's consequences. Just say it with me. There's con Turn to your neighbor right now. There's con Because there's always going to be a consequence, right? Uh, the Bible says in, uh, I think it's in... Uh, uh, Revelations 12, 9 or 10 or somewhere around there, it says the whole world's going to look at the one who deceived the world. They're going to look at him, that one, and they're going to say, is this he? Is this the one who deceived the whole world? And, and I, I, I wonder if, 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 if we could repeat what Eve said. Eve turned to, to the serpent, and I think the, the, it said to her, the moment that her eyes were open, she probably said, you lied to me. And that's exactly what the world is going to do when they see the devil one day. They're going to look at him and say, you lied to me. You lied to me. And, and I wonder right now uh, if we could just think about some of the stuff that's gone on in our life and just say, you know what? You lied to me. You lied to me. It's time for truth again in my life. It's time for a shift. It's time for a change in my life. And if, it's, if that's you, it's time to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen? God bless you.